All right. So we have talked in a couple of places about phase changes. We have talked about the energy that you have to put in to raise the temperature of a substance. We've talked about the energy that you have to put in to do a phase change. Now we have the ability to put those all together and I want to draw all of them together on the same picture so that we can look at like from one really low temperature to one really high temperature, what happens across that entire range to the heat that you put in and the temperature change that happens during those things. So I'm going to draw a heating curve for water. And I'm going to go from minus 25 degrees to, um, we'll say 120. I'm go below the freezing point to above the boiling point. So if it was not water that you would need to be given or you would need to look up the boiling and freezing point, because it's water, let's just kind of list what we know. We know that it freezes at zero. We know that it boils at 100. So I cannot just Q equals MC delta T and have my delta T go from minus 25 to 120. Let's put a big ol' orange, red, no, do not, do not do this. We don't have liquid water the whole time. Um, we have talked about how the temperature doesn't change when you do a phase change. So this one equation will not work. It cannot work. It will not give you the correct answer. So let's draw a picture though and look at the different components and where those components show up. So I'm going to track temperature on one scale. and heat added on the other. So this is going to be my temperature. <clears throat> and heat added. So if I'm at minus 25 degrees, I have solid water, right? I have ice until I get to zero degrees. So this is just some substance that will have a temperature change as I heat it. Just that only works until I get to the freezing point. So I'm going to label this part of the curve number one. This is the part where we're warming ice. Now, if you're just warming up a substance to get a temperature change, it's Q equals MC delta T. We just need a specific heat capacity for ice, which would be different from the heat capacity for water. Now, once you get to the freezing point, remember the temperature doesn't change as you do a phase change. So this should be flat. And it stays flat until I've put in enough energy to melt all of my ice. So melting ice. So if you like to have equations. Remember, this was moles times the enthalpy of fusion to figure out how much heat you have to put in to melt the ice. Or you could set it up like a unit conversion, which we looked at. Once the ice is melted, 
I now have water at zero degrees. So as I put in heat, my water will warm up until I get to 100 degrees. So this is the third part of the curve. Then all of the heat that I put in goes toward boiling that water. And then it's all a gas. So all of the heat that I put in goes toward warming the gas. So let me get three, four, and five labeled down here. So three is warming the liquid. So Q equals MC delta T, and we need CS for liquid water. Four was boiling. So we were doing a phase change, so there's no temperature change. And again, you could do this as a unit conversion, but if you like having an equation, it's number of moles times delta H of vaporization. And then in the last part, everything had turned into a gas. So all of the heat that we put in goes toward warming the gas. So now we can do MC delta T, but we need a CS for H2O gas. These specific heat capacities will not be equal to each other, but they are all known values that we can look up. So all of the information that we need for this will be available, and we can get that to calculate the temperature change. The really important part is that if it's not water or something that you're not familiar with, you know where it boils, where it freezes, and what temperature range you're going to be working over.